Welcome to Pier Glass Poetry Spotlight Number Six, where we will visit one poem and its author. I'm Stan Galloway, your host, and today we'll be looking at Slippage by Cassinia Ritika. It's good to be with you today. Thanks, Stan. It's a great pleasure to be here with you. A Ukrainian American poet, Ksenia, comes to us today from Michigan. She is the author of A Sky Full of Wings, which came out in 2021 from Finishing Line Press as part of their New Women's Voices series. Senya, would you begin by reading the poem for us? Mm -hmm, sure. Slippage. I read aloud to mother, enunciating her own words, the poems she'd stay up nights writing after years alone, raising children, Velvet Knight, her muse, her savior. Mother smiles, but sits mute, stroking my palm. Blue eyes wander, already I am losing her. She wants to go back to her childhood home in Rozhnitiu, live with her mother and father long gone. I distract her, sing off key, folk songs we once twirled to on the linoleum floor of our compact kitchen, feet stomping with passion of Hutzel mountain folk or young couples jumping bonfires on Midsummer Eve. Mother hums along, happy. These songs are in her bones. These songs have traveled through blood-stained lands, sustained her through bombings and a rough ocean crossing, taking her far, then farther still from her childhood home. Mother doesn't know of the current war in her homeland, of 100 protesters shot dead by snipers on same square where we dance on New Year's Eve, of Crimea overrun on Kremlin's orders, of soldiers slipping over the Ukrainian border 70 years after she fled all those invaders. No, mother doesn't know. And if only for this, I am glad. Mm, yes. Thank you, Xenia. I'm sure this poem, both in writing and performing, uh, is a difficult one. Uh, the poem alludes to an escape from Ukraine sometime in the past and also to events from 2014. Could you help our listeners by filling in a little more of these historical contexts? Um, certainly. Um, today, a horrific war is being waged on Ukraine. But this unprovoked Russian war on Ukraine actually started in 2014, when Crimea was illegally annexed by Russia. In the poem, I mention 100 protesters shot down by snipers on the main square in Kiev. I'm referring to Euromaidan, which began in November 2013, when students and others began peacefully protesting against the sudden decision by then-President Yanukovych to veer away from signing an association agreement with the European Union that had long been in the works. Instead, Yanukovych stated that he would pursue closer economic ties with Russia. Police responded with violence against the students and protests continued to grow despite sub-freezing temperatures. In late January, several activists were shot dead and these deaths caused even more widespread protests throughout the country against Yanukovych. A few weeks later, special forces and interior troops snipers shot at people gathered peacefully on the main square. The perished protesters were named the Heavenly Hundred as more than a hundred people were killed. Yanukovych shortly fled the country and asked Russia for help, even though the Ukrainian parliament had voted to remove him from office. 
Russia then invaded and annexed Crimea and then went into the Donbass region in eastern Ukraine. The poem also touches on my mother's past. During the closing years of World War II, when she as a teenager was forced to flee Ukraine with her parents and younger brother, my family lived in a little city in the Carpathian Mountains in western Ukraine. After surviving Nazi occupation, they found themselves having to flee the invading Russian army. They all thought that Ukraine would become independent once the war was over, but instead the whole of Ukraine was incorporated into the Soviet Union. And it's, uh, it's hard for us to remember, uh, particularly from an American perspective, which uh, is often too insular, that uh, that that there was a, a, a component in Eastern Europe in World War II because we focused so much on uh, the American involvement and there was uh, so, so little American involvement in that part of the war and yet people's lives are changed uh, dramatically from that. Let me also uh, ask, this is a poem about mothers and poems to mothers are difficult to write. Uh, I, I mean, without slipping into cliche, uh, yeah, most of us have a relationship with a mother and finding a way to make that relationship distinct is not easy and requires perhaps a greater specificity than other types of poems. And I wonder if you could uh, uh, pull together uh, your process in choosing the details uh, for a poem like this. What I was trying to express in the compact space of a poem was the essence of the relationship between me and my mother, the huge link to her homeland that was passed down to me, and the difficult moments of seeing a loved one start to slip away. I focused on memories that stood out in my head and then fine-tuned the images as I worked on the poem. The more specific the detail, the easier for readers to visualize and feel that they are part of the scene as well, as though the story is unfolding before their eyes. Just recalling the linoleum floor instantly takes me back to my childhood and how many important moments took place in that compact kitchen my mother would sit at the table writing poems late at night. We would cook there. We would eat there. I'd write my homework there. We'd dance around the kitchen. All these precious moments recalled with that one visual image. Using strong verbs is important too and carries forth the sense of momentum. Bringing Ukrainian folk music into the poem was vital is that is something that is passed down through generations and connects past with present, with traditions that are remembered and observed even far away from the homeland, especially when they were suppressed during the Soviet era. Thank you uh, for that uh, insight. The context of the mother uh, in this poem balances that knife edge that uh, of the need to remember and the value of not knowing. Um, and I, when you were composing this poem, if you can remember, was that tension there from the beginning? Is that what prompted the poem? Or is that something that you discovered and developed because of the relationship with the mother? It was something that I was very aware of at the start of the poem because that was the reality of the situation. I didn't know that it would play out in the poem the way that it did, and that's something that developed as part of the creative process. I never really know for sure what path the poem will take me down, and that's the fun part of writing. Right. Yeah, and I think that's true for so many uh, poets, is that, that we have the seeds or the impressions uh, that a poem begins from. But yeah, that's the fun of it is not knowing where it's going to go. Um, 
I find in your work and the work of many other Ukrainian writers uh, that strong connection with the mother and homeland, which uh, are apparent in this poem. Is there something in Ukrainian sensibilities that make this a stronger connection than in other cultures? I believe it was around the 17th century that Mother Ukraine as a symbol first appeared in Ukrainian poetry. Um, perhaps it's because Ukraine was not an independent country for some centuries. That image of a sometimes bereft mother representing homeland, it became a powerful and emotional tool. Coincidentally though, I just wrote a new poem a couple of weeks ago and this symbol made its way into my poem. Let me read it to you as part of my response. Yeah, please. The poem is called Carpathian Homecoming. When mother pressed me to her breast, song of the Carpathians cascading like the Prutsky falls from her lips, I swallowed whole. I spoke your language, even though separated by ocean and iron curtain, smuggled poems of dissidence laid bare the pain of trampling boots, sting of whip borne on your back. Bruised but never broken, you welcomed me home, daughter of reluctant refugees bombarded by bullets and bombs. Even as they fled west, they never stopped looking back. Mm. Very nice. Um, thinking about that, uh, that blending of uh, homeland and, and the, the, uh, the biological family, uh, but maybe from a little different angle, uh, I'm noticing uh, Laura Bernstein Mackley wrote of your collection, uh, uh, A Sky Full of Wings, uh, and it's certainly true of this particular poem, Slippage, that your work is, and here's the quotation, rich with longing and loss. Uh, and I wonder if you think those elements are prevalent in your work, uh, or is she seeing this through a, a, a different lens, um, or is this something maybe unconscious in you that she now makes uh, conscious? I think that it's a little bit of both. I don't consciously set out to write with these elements in mind, but that's what comes out. And as a writer, I don't analyze my work. When someone else points it out, I kind of chuckle and have to agree, but it's never something that it, that's in my head when I sit down to write. It does make sense though. My family was forced to flee their homeland to escape communist rule. And as a first generation child, that sense of longing and loss was passed down to me. Ukrainian was my first language, and I grew up completely immersed in the Ukrainian culture through schooling and scouts and being part of an active Ukrainian-American community. At the same time, I was cut off from Ukraine during the Soviet era, and it always seemed somewhat mythical until I was finally able to visit in 1990, the year before independence was declared. Well, this has been uh, a rich discussion, and as always, let me end by asking if there's anything you would like to add uh, that will help us appreciate this poem uh, more fully. I think the history the poem highlights is very relevant today, given the atrocities currently being committed against Ukrainians. There are millions of refugees who have already had to flee, and it's just unbelievable that so many years after my family fled as refugees, war has once again come unbidden to Ukraine. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's a real pleasure talking with you. Ksenia worked as an editor in Ukraine in the early years of the post-Soviet era, era uh, 1996 to 2000. Her poetry has appeared in numerous literary journals, and she has 
presented her work in various places, including New York and Chicago. You can learn more about her at her website, seniarictica.com. For Periglass Poetry, I'm Stan Galloway, wishing you a poetic day. <laughs>